Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So after a two week break, I've decided to probably get back into YouTube and stuff. So now yeah, here we are. Before I start trembling away though, I just want to state and you no, know, basically put this out there. This is my theory and my thoughts about the events that happened four months ago between Amao and the developer of Strike Mall 9. I don't want to paint anybody in a bad picture or say that anybody did the right thing here. This is just my thoughts and my theory about the events. So 4 months ago, as at the time of making this video, Amao or Owen, as I will be referring to him from now on, posted a video where he basically announced the fact that he will stop promoting Strike Team Online and will be making his own game with the help of the former Strike Team Online developers. For a couple of reasons, but the two main ones were the fact that Steve had delayed the beta of Strike Team Online 3 times and also denied a free advertising offer from Trovo, which made Amo feel best in front of the Trovo admin who offered Stead advertising offer. Now, I understand where Owen is coming from, having gotten the backlash for advertising project that you myself and stuff, but my theory for Steve's actions were due to the pressure that Am Owen's community had put on him. Owen included by constantly pasta and came with questions. You see, before the entire CQB aspect of Strike Team Online became popular, the game already had a pretty big fan base on Discord and Steve was slowly developing the game as a passion project. But when Owen's community came into the picture, advertising what was essentially a hobby that a single person had dedicated their time to, to it became overwhelming for Steam and I believe him angering Gamo in order to get him to leave Strike Online was the plan all along. While yes, Steve Kerr probably told Gamo he doesn't want to work with him anymore, that still wouldn't have made Gamo's community leave and go to other games. Consider the fact that thanks to Owen, the Strike Team Online Discord server had basically doubled in population and got over 5,000 members from this entire debate and, C and CQB thing and just in general the attention that game got. And at the time the game had roughly 10,000 people in the Discord server at the time, I mean 4 months ago when this whole thing was still developing. 10,000 people asking questions and, and making suggestions about the content they want to see in Strike Team Online is probably pretty overwhelming for a single indie developer. Mind you, Steve at the time had only one developer, even though he basically got Dutrude to pretend to be a developer with him, but from, apparently from what Dutrude has said on Discord, uh, Steve never allowed him to actually work on the game, and I'm not going to comment on that, I do not know the full picture of that, so I'm not going to say anything. I do not intend to paint anybody in a, back in a bad picture, but I appreciate it if Steve or Rowan would say something about this theory and if it's true or not. Now, for those who really care, I am aware that I've been missing for two weeks and I decided to make this video that I've been thinking of for a long time, just in general, because I want to start doing more different content on my channel, I want to start getting to commentary, maybe just give my opinions on certain subjects and stuff, and just in general, you know, make some original content for the mobile game you've seen. If you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to see more, please drop a comment, drop some feedback, drop a like, drop a subscribe, do all of that YouTube stuff and you know maybe just say anything how you feel how felt how you felt about the video. Jesus I can't talk. And um yeah with all of that being rambled I'm going to head out now. Bye Trying to go high and never stay low They're gonna see my name on the street sign To light them up for the fame and the city lights In the city now, it's my city